back on Morning Line, talking media, politics, fake news, all this. We're going to try to be as accurate and unfake as possible with Professor Larry Burris from MTSU. It's good to have you on. We try. Yeah, we, we try. <laughs> Again, we're by no means perfect, but we try, and we owe that to you to do the best we can. And you do the best you can to school these young minds to go into this field. And, and there is something. These days, it seems to me, Professor, that you know, almost anyone with a cell phone cam or a blog can kind of become a voice of authority in a journalist. And, and, and people can, on their own, tell good stories or get video like that, that hit and run on mm -hmm. Natchez Trace. But there is training. You, it, there, there is a reason you go to school to become a journalist, and there are certain things that the layperson, just as I would not be aware of what it takes to be an engineer, a layperson engineer doesn't know what it takes to be a journalist, correct? That's right. And, and the, the, the training part is, is so important. It's not that we're just necessarily training you to write. In the case of, of the Natchez Trace, the, the driver hit the bicyclist and then drove off. That looks horrible. Why did he drive off? Was he mm -hmm. drunk? Was he on some kind of medication? Did he not see the person he hit? Well, he banged into him. Uh, it was a big car, though, I understand. So yeah. maybe he, he maybe didn't, he didn't think know he hit about it. it. Right? So before yeah. we start judging, we need to say what else is going on. And what we try to teach our students is there's the picture. What's behind the picture? Yeah. What else is going on? So when you we teach students how to read a, a city and state budget, mm -hmm. here's the numbers. What do the numbers mean? And you say, well, uh, you know, the budget's going to increase or it's going to have a, a, a $10 million impact on the state. What does that mean to the individual person in the right. state? Is it going to impact me a dollar or a hundred dollars? That's a, that's a big difference, and we we try to teach reporters how to do that sort of data analysis to better inform the public. Here's what these numbers mean, because both sides again are going to take those numbers and spend them to prove their own particular point of view. Mm -hmm. And we said with, with, with the healthcare debate, you know, how many people are going to be uninsured or insured or partially insured, and depending on which side you listen to, the numbers are totally skewed because both sides want to present the numbers their own way and right. we try to tell, teach our students, here's how you analyze those numbers. Yeah, and, and analysis is not just, okay, so you're going a step beyond just reporting what came out in um, whatever release was sent out by a government agency, but your analysis still Still has to be impartial, sure. but you want to get the best information. Say, well, if they do this, that means if you have a one hundred thousand dollar house, that's how much you're going to pay more each year in property mm -hmm. taxes. So you interpret for people to that degree, not interpreting whether that's a good or a bad thing, but just saying that's what's right. going to happen, and right. that's a very important part. And when you help start people doing understand. That, then the other side complains about it yeah. because you haven't spun it their way. Right, and uh, yeah, and that, that's a fine line. You've got to be careful because you know, reporters that aren't paying close attention can spin things uh, their way. Sometimes not even realizing exactly. it. Exactly. You know. So let's go to uh, Anthony. Hi, Anthony. Hey, how's it going? Good morning. What's on your mind? Hey, uh, uh, good day to you guys and uh, Professor. I wanted to talk to you in particular. Uh, I wanted to ask you because I have young children and they are very. Uh, on the uh, media thing, you know, Facebook, Snapchat, stuff mm -hmm. like that. And uh, as a professor, I wonder what your responsibility you feel to like your students, how to make the media be not so much of a social commentary to where like they make it like a part of their life, but just do it like black and white like it used to be back in the day. To where my children, they can just make their own opinion instead of somebody trying to make their opinion for them. Mm -hmm. uh, he's right on the numbers because his kids, sure. that's where they're going to be getting the news from. They're not watching Morning Line. My son, who's 16, <laughs> 17, doesn't watch the evening news, doesn't even know what a newspaper is. He gets it like his kids off of his cell phone or his laptop. Right, th there's a difference between getting it off your cell phone, you know, we, we can get Channel 5 well, now on you your can, cell sure. phone, sure. Uh, so are they getting it from Channel 5 or are they getting it from some bizarre website out there? My feeling is that many people today are going to the, the odd sorts of, they're not going to news sites, mm -hmm. they're going to social media sites and assuming that's news and it's not and when we use the term media and we include Channel 5 and the New York Times and Snapchat when we include all those together then the public gets I think real confused as to what the news is and they see uh, a Facebook report being done by some 
13 year old mm -hmm. who doesn't know what he's doing uh, and they count that as news that's not news and somehow the father's absolutely correct we need to direct kids back to legitimate news sources yeah, is that just then a matter of uh, the parent talking and getting them used to these habits early on because you know yeah the parents can try but they're going to the sites that their friends tell them about you know mm, sure sure I mean it's, it's a tough road to hoe but I mean I if maybe you sit down I, heck I don't know half the stuff these sites you're talking mm -hmm. about that are obscure that my son goes to he likes watching funny videos sure. and things like this I don't know what those are all about well, you need to tell your son that isn't news yeah that, that here here's a news site and there are liberal conservative news sites you need to be paying attention to both of them and understand that the truth, whatever that is, yes. is somewhere in, in the middle that both sides are, are spinning their own particular positions. And where we in the media get trapped is if we in fact run both sides, mm -hmm. left and right, then the person on the on the right is going to say we're not being fair because we gave time to the person on the left. Mm -hmm. And the person on the left, the person on the right is going to say is wrong and we shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, you just, you know, sometimes you can't win. No. I, mean, I just to the point mm -hmm. even where I, I once had a complaint where I went to great pains to, to obviously tell both sides mm -hmm. of the story, but one side complained that I gave the soundbite from the other side first instead of theirs. One came before his, or they timed it and said, well, my bite was 15 seconds and his was 20. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're really parsing it down, but mm -hmm. they sometimes watch that close. And I certainly was nothing intended by me, and I thought it was very fairly done got to that point and I'm like come on man part of the problem is that we in the media haven't done a very good job explaining to the public that something in, in your newscast something has got to be first you got it you know there's a yeah. there's a top story there and you're gonna make a judgment as to what that should be and reporters do have biases that's why we try to give both sides so if, if there's right. an issue out there and you think this particular side is the important side you're gonna give that first mm -hmm. um, the example I use in, in, in classes is there's there's the student paper sidelines and then there, there's faculty news media mm -hmm. as well and if there's a fire in the administration building sidelines the student paper the lead is going to be something about student records yeah the, the the faculty newsletter the lead is going to be faculty records yeah. <laughs> because you got to appeal to the audience that yeah. doesn't make one of them right or wrong it's, just, it's something Different has audience. got to be at the top that's right and the sideline story three paragraphs down is going to say faculty records that's mm -hmm. part of the story the faculty newsletter two paragraphs down is going to say student records but it wasn't at the top. Right. You said this wasn't important. Well, no, we gotta con you, you, the media, have to consider the Start audience somewhere. out there. And that's why you hope people stick around at least for most of the story. And the average story in a newscast is about a minute 30. So, But attention spans keep getting shorter yeah. and shorter. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Brian. Hi, Brian. Hey, uh, I'm right down the road from that Natchez Trace thing. You know that. Yep. Yeah, it's a beautiful stretch of road, I'll tell you that much, but tragic. I don't like, you know, we don't like it when we get in the news out here, because we're like, we're on the edge of, when people come out here and they go, this is Davidson County? I said, yeah, mm -hmm. God's country, but I'm on the Williamson County side, so we throw rocks at them, but yeah, it's kind of weird. We don't hear much about, you know, out here, so we like the news, no news is good news, and news people stay away from this part of the country. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I was going to say, you know, uh, I was at the University of Toronto advertising, and I had some writing and journalism courses. Uh, it seems like, like I said before, with election, things come and go, and the tide ebbs and flows, not to get too uh, hippie-esque here, but uh, so times come and go. But one thing I've noticed, though, is that they go back and forth, and then sometimes the media will get more assertive. I noticed it happening, because I graduated in 89, and then in the 80s, it got conservative in the 90s, it moved up a little bit, but then it came back again real conservative, especially after 9-11. But the thing that's changing is the demographics. And I don't know if the demographics will totally swing the media and academia farther to the left. That's what I uh, may have. I don't, not, the word's not concerned. I don't care. I'm out in the country. But I think you know what I'm saying. Okay, yeah, maybe you can speak mm -hmm. to that. You know, there are those who are going to say academia, the university, professors like Mr. Burris have mm -hmm. a slant that they're teaching the kids. Mm -hmm. We have a position, but we try to keep that out of 
the, the lectures. So when I talk to students about the media, I, I stress being fair, mm -hmm. uh, giving all the sides. I, pers my personal feeling is that one side is right and the other side's wrong. Mm -hmm. But we try to have a debate on that, and and I say to the students, if you've got a position, let's hear it. And part of the, of the academy is seen as liberal because we do encourage debate on issues. We, we encourage questioning and challenging. I don't see how de encouraging debate on issues should be looked at as liberal. That's ridiculous. Uh, I mean, but people do that, right, and that's just right. wrong. I mean, debate is not one side or the other. Debate is healthy. Right. So rather than control the debate, which traditionally has been a conservative position, we're going to allow all the points of view out there, and liberals traditionally, and that's interesting, that, that, that's changed over the years. Um, I used to be able to refer to Republicans and Democrats taking various positions, and their positions seem to have shifted over the last several years. Um, in my estimation, at least, the liberal side has begun to favor more control. Hmm. That, that their you know, politically hmm. correctness is coming from the left, not necessarily from the right. So I think the positions have shifted, hmm. which makes it very, very confusing as, as sure. well. So we try to, to say to the students, express your opinion. Here is what I think. Here's what I think the truth is. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been at this for a while, but I may be wrong. And I think what's happened in Washington is people are not saying, I may be wrong. Just once on one of the national level talk shows, I'd like to see somebody say, you know, I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. You may be right about that. <laughs> it isn't going to happen. That's going to show weakness. Yeah. That's going to show that, that I changed my position. I'm, I'm not solid in what I believe. Well, there was a phrase back in the 60s, is it always right to be right? Mm -hmm. And maybe yeah. we need to, to have some of these people saying, you know, you may have a good idea. I didn't right. think about that one, but you can't say that. And that, I just don't understand. If I heard a politician say that, first of all, I'd fall out of my chair. And second of all, <laughs> that politician, whether conservative or liberal, would be someone who would forever have my support because it shows they have an open mind and they're willing maybe even to compromise, which means maybe we get something done that's worthwhile. Yeah. When, when we go back 20 years, well, 20 years ago you said this. Well, yeah, but I've studied it. I've looked at the issue. Yeah, hello. And, and I changed my mind. Well, you're being too flexible. You're, you know, you're not solid in your position. Okay. We need to be changing our minds. We need to look at the facts and say, you know, I looked at this. Here's what I think. And politicians don't don't do that. I agree. Let's go to Mike. Mike, good morning. Hey, Nick and hey, Professor. Mike. Hey, I've got a question or two to ask if you don't mind. Uh -huh. Okay, my qu first question is, how if you would like to tell you guys to help me maybe do a story like here in Humphreys County we got a road called Highway 70 going into Dixon County uh, from Waverly through McEwen and all that and there's more people being killed on that road every day with car wrecks and mm -hmm. people just passing like crazy on double yellow lines and we asked the law force to do things about it and they're doing their best. No, I'm not running them down because they're trying, but they're always not out. And there's just, I'd like to know if you guys should come down this way or mm -hmm. talk to somebody about getting something done. Because, I mean, our former state representative, John Tibble, wrote a letter to the governor and called it Bloody Highway 70, you know, because mm -hmm. there's just been so many wrecks. And yeah. we've well, been promised a four lane. Well, what he's talking about, and I had to cut him off because we're going to go to break, but I'll let mm -hmm. you comment real quick as sure. we do, is, is sometimes journalism at its best potentially is getting with a group like his or in a community like that and highlighting a problem where people are dying and maybe putting it on the public radar so the legislature or law enforcement maybe can take some more steps to save lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, He's from, from Humphreys County. Yeah. I'm from Rutherford County. Rutherford County needs that road money. Hmm. We need the yeah. state so road money. Humphreys County it. doesn't need it. We need it. Well, how do we how do we balance that that, that out? It, it, it's a legitimate issue. Yeah. Um, well, that's where you, you know, know, as a journalist, maybe you go and get statistics, and if you're truly looking for the most dangerous, bloody roadway in the state, you look and find it. And wherever maybe a bunch of people are dying, then you could mm -hmm. do a story. You rank it. You go down mm -hmm. the line. It's not our choice to decide who gets the money, mm -hmm. but we, at least we can lay it out there. And sometimes things are happening, and you need to bring it to the public's attention. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of argue the point. Yeah. If people in Humphreys County would slow down, yeah. they wouldn't have as many deaths. See. We in Rutherford County need that money because we drive safely. Oh, boy, that's the way um, it is, well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what politicians think. <laughs> sure, absolutely. All right, we'll take a break on that note. We'll be back. Lucy, we'll get your calls. And, Bob, um, right after this, when we come back on our final segment.